Well, hello everyone, and you join us here today um, with one of those little magic touches. We, uh, we, we have been, Tom and I, always fascinated by those magicians that go around uh, weddings and entertain you at the table. And um, apparently so has Cartier, because Cartier has released a watch called the Mass Mysterious. You might have seen it. And it has a few tricks up its sleeve. Uh, Tom, your initial impressions on this watch, what grabbed you first? Um, oh, I really like the uh, Roman numerals markers. They're really nice. Um, the platinum case is really fetching. Um, yeah. Yeah. 43.5 millimetres wide. It's quite a big one. 12.64 uh, millimetres tall, like you say, in platinum. Uh, did you spot the ruby cabochon? Usually sapphire in the crown, but here is, is ruby. So that's, that's very different, very special. Yeah, I, I do like a uh, ruby cabochon on the crown. Um, I like to um, just sort of gently touch it to my cheek. And um, ADs don't like that, but <laughs> if I'm going to buy a watch, I need to get that smoothness on my skin. Yeah, cheek feel is a very important part of watch purchasing. Perhaps it's a video we can we can do in the future. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nice nice uh, kind of hour track you got around the edge with a little inner minutes uh, brushed steel work going on there. Kind of a nice. It's it's quite a big watch as we've said. Wears uh, wears pretty big. Um, any other standout features that you might have noticed? Well, I thought the name was a bit odd. The Cartier Mass Hysteria. What what does that mean? <laughs> Well, I'm no linguist expert, but I, I think perhaps there might be a little bit lost in translation. Uh, the Mass Mysterious. Right. Oh, I've been saying that. <laughs> and you've been screaming it as well, which didn't help. That panics ADs when you do that. <laughs> mass. Not sure about that. We'll get onto that maybe in a bit, in a, in a little while. But Mysterious, that's a word I think we can translate mm. by ear alone, if anything. Um, a long time ago, back in 1912... Cartier, they got about making these uh, clocks called mystery clocks. And what these things were designed to do was have the hours and minutes floating there in the, in the clock face, seemingly disconnected from everything else, uh, in order to entertain the guests, really. These literally were um, produced by Louis Cartier with help from his um, uh, clockmaker, Maurice Couet. I think is the wrong pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Almost definitely. Most most definitely. Inspired by illusionist Jean-Eugène Robert Houdin. Um, these, these clocks were created purely to entertain. They were like, you know how you might have like a, a funky stereo or a big TV these days or a nice plant pot? The, the wealthy back in those days would have a, a clock. And it might be that this clock was a minute repeater and everyone would come around and they'd, they'd pull the lever and it would chime the, the sound and everyone would go, oh, oh, oh. And, yeah. you know, the, the, more, the more gentle of spirit might faint and have to be carried out. Similar sort of thing. You'd go, oh, hands are floating. And everyone would say, well, how is it? And people would cry out, which burnings would happen. And it would be an all round, an all round wonderful evening. I think we definitely had a couple. I remember a couple of these growing up, knocking about the place. You know, we had a little bust of Beethoven, yeah. a top-loading VHS player with the remote that plugs in with a wire, and, and a couple of uh, Cartier mystery clocks. I'm pretty sure every household had them growing up. Yeah, mine was next to the, the, the gun that was actually a lighter. <laughs> yeah. So this is a tradition that Cartier has continued to maintain. You know, it's they're, they're good fun. You see them and you're like, huh? Yeah. Everyone loves everyone. This, this is this is proper Instagram, TikTok, Reddit bait. Like, how does it work? Look at the Insanium uh, optical illusion. A horological version of a magic eye picture. It is, yeah. If you look at it for long enough. No, that's Guilloche. <laughs> if you look at it for long enough, your bank account will become significantly lighter. <laughs> so we saw uh, a few years back, and if you speak French properly, I do apologise. The Cartier Revelation d'une Pentier. Which was, do you remember in the, in the, you went to the doctor's surgery and while you were waiting there to have that little hammer on the knee or whatever it was that doctors do, you had those things, you turn them upside down and you tip them up and all the little beads fall and they sit in little plastic pots and you could get scores. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yep, that yep, little yep. toy. The Cartier did a watch like that, seemingly completely invisible dial, a bunch of beads in it, you turn it upside down, you turn it the right way up again, all the beads settle and you see a panther's face, which is very emblematic for Cartier. Uh, they've also done stuff like the Rotonde Cartier Mysterious Double Tourbillon, 
things like that, so uh, mysterious Torbjorn as well, all around this, what they would describe as playfulness. Yeah. Uh, what I would describe as cool stuff. Yeah. Nothing's cooler than a Torbjorn floating in the middle of a dial not connected to anything. I mean, what? <laughs> what? Um, and the Cartier Mass Mysterious is no different. You take a look at it and you will notice that the hands, hours and minutes, have no direct connection to the crown or the outside case whatsoever. They float, that's the mystery. And even to this day, I mean, we're talking a hundred odd years on from when the first mystery clocks were made. Even to this day, you look at it and your brain goes, what? Did you get a hazard a guess as to how that might work? Mirrors. Uh, not not mirrors. Any, any other... Uh, more educated guesses? Magnets? <laughs> there are some watches like this that do use magnets. Obviously, the downside is that it ruins the rest of the movement, but that's a good... Um, uh, Resonance use magnets for a similar kind of concept. Right. So it's not mirrors, it's not magnets. That only leaves real magic. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what Cartier would have you believe. Um, I'm yeah. sure they don't detail it anywhere on there. It's not on the back of the box or anything. You have to embrace the mystery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's not like a little video that you can watch afterwards that shows you how the trick is done. <laughs> yeah, no, this this is um, purely endorsed by the uh, Magic Circle, actual witchcraft. They had to send this away to uh, an ancient tribe found only in the Pyrenees. They poured some, um, some magic liquid on it and then they come back to the Cartier factory. Yeah, and, and that's the sort of tradition and heritage that I love about Cartier. Absolutely. So and, until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video and you've learned <laughs> a lot about this watch. Um, well, there's a little bit more to it than that. Right, okay. Because we mentioned the Roman numerals and the platinum case. So what's, what's the, the other thing? <laughs> the other thing, I don't know if you've noticed, there is the calibre... 9801 MC but they've done something a little different with the movement here normally a mechanical watch has a mechanical movement fine so does this and normally that that movement is powered the spring is wound with a winding rotor so is this what Cartier has done is they've killed two birds with one stone and turned the winding rotor into the movement that's mad isn't it yeah now I was very fortunate to play with this watch well, I think, I'm going to be honest, our explanation on how this thing works is only going to be shades of grey away from magnets and smoke and mirrors. Because I, I really don't, I really can't figure this one out. This is some brain box stuff going on here. It does sort of hurt a little bit to try and figure it out. Yeah. Um, I think, Tom, and dear viewer and listener, you've probably got a better chance of fully understanding Tenet than how this watch works. <laughs> So I'm going to call this the Cartier Christophe Nolan yeah. um, rather than the Mass Mysterious. At least this watch didn't give me tinnitus. <laughs> um, mass, of course, I was jesting. I do know that that's in reference to the, the winding weight um, that is the movement here. But right, get this. Okay. It's certainly not in reference to how many they're producing. No, no. What is it? 30. 30. 30, yeah, and you'll pay for it too. Uh, 250,000 euros. So here we go. Here's my attempt. We've put this off as long as possible. I've been trying to think about how to explain this, but I don't understand it myself, so it's going to be a failure on all counts. Go on. Six layers of sapphire. You've got one at the front and one at the back, like the crystals. Right. You've got two layers, two more layers of sapphire in there. One is the entire size of the dial and a little bit more, and that has the hour hand, and another one with the minute hand, and those have little teeth on the edge which are uh, controllable by the crown to set the time. Okay. Then you have a fifth layer of sapphire, and that's in there, and that is static, that doesn't move. This is the thing that the winding weight is mounted to, like can spin around. Okay. And then you have a sixth layer of sapphire upon which the winding weight itself is mounted. Are you with me so far? Because I'm not. I think so. If so, so those extra layers of sapphire, there's some that rotate. If, I suppose if you were to, if a, somehow a tiny speck of dust managed to work its way inside, you might see a little floating speck of dust whizzing around at some point. Yeah, I think 50,000 of the 250,000 euro price is in employing a man just with a little blower just to go <laughs> and make yeah. sure there are none in there and ruin the whole mystery. Sure. 
But then that leaves you with the whole question of how does the rotor weight spin but also transmit the time? It, it has to be completely freely free spinning but also rigidly fixed against the hands as well. Um, I've got one word for you, Tom, and I hope you know what it means because I don't know how to explain it. Differential. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say mirrors. <laughs> Are you familiar with a differential? It sounds like something a car would have, but I don't really know what it's about. I'm not a carman. You're absolutely right. And to fellow carmen out there, you will also recognise that the differential is the part of the vehicle that allows the drive shaft to transmit its power to the wheels. Right. Oh, sorry. Did, did, did you want more explanation than that? No, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as I understand it, right, if you think about a car going forwards, you've got the outside and the inside driven wheel, right? And they both turn at the same speed. Power's okay. going through them. Sure. If the car goes around a corner, the wheel on the inside is not going to be travelling as far, so it has to turn slower. So somehow the power has to be evenly distributed to both of those wheels while they turn at different speeds. Right. Magnets. And mirrors. And a little bit of smoke. Uh, through a series of clever planetary gears and all that kind of scientific wizardry, shall we say, Cartier has managed to do th this thing with the watch now. Do you understand? Yeah, um, well, no, uh, not at all, but it sounds great. <laughs> now, usually my mind would want to go into properly understanding how something like this works, but two things. One, the mystery of it is part of the fun. Just seeing it and it turning your mind into a bowl of noodles is what this watch is for. Definitely. Understanding it ruins it. Yeah, embrace the mystery. Yeah. Two, I don't think I can understand it, so I'm not going to bother trying. <laughs> yeah. But what a watch. Anyone who says that Cartier isn't a watchmaker, um, go eat your hat right now, because this is watchmaking to the finest degree. It really is. Not just in terms of finishing and all of that traditionality, but like sheer bonkers, like, can we do it? This is this is why it's the Christoph Nolan to me. Mm, yeah, one of the one of the standouts from uh, this year's watches and wonders, and that's no mean feat, is it? To to cut through the noise and be something different. Um, so yeah, admirable effort from Cartier there, for sure. And for me, the coolest thing about it was Cartier's attitude. Their their whole take on it was like, oh oh, this old thing. Oh yeah, it's no biggie. We just turned the rotor weight into the movement. Ha! <laughs> Did you see? We also sell handbags. Um, <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Only downside, you can't wind it with the crown. It has to spin around to wind. But I think I'm fine with that. Yeah, you'd be doing that anyway, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd be like, whoa! Yeah, kill time on the bus or whatever. Yeah, invite all your friends round in the traditional way. Put the watch on the side, gather everyone, give them all a glass of champagne. Make sure there's a fainting couch nearby and show them your new Cartier Mass Mysterious. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Yeah. And while you're doing that, um, we'll be thinking about our next video. So until then, bye. Bye.